Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 183, and I'm talking to a person across the pond who's just updated his uh, connection to fiber broadband. We'll see how that works. I thought fiber meant more follicles. It doesn't. It means higher internet. I could use the follicles. Well, whatever. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm the very bold Peter Old, <laughs> and today is June the 4th, 2015. Believe it or not, Peter and I are actually re-recording this episode because the first time around, my microphone just died, and uh, I didn't yeah. know until it was too late. I'll get the staff, can I, you? I, I now have this this wave thing right in front of my eyes, so I'll know if the microphone dies again. We'll see what happens. So we talked about this all before, so all my funny jokes and stuff, you probably won't laugh at. Hopefully you will. <laughs> so uh, first off, uh, we're having gender issues in the world, uh, both over on your side of the, the world and my side of the world. Uh, here we call Bruce Caitlin. Over there, we're going to call God she. Um, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. It's a suggestion. Um, it took a long time for uh, England to uh, approve women bishops and stuff like that. And all the fright was they're just going to bring liberalism to the church and the church is going to get worse. And um, that we read in recent uh, three or four days that there is a proposal from Watch that we take um, the gender father or male out of God and add she. And this isn't the first time we've heard this. It's been, you know, uh, you go back to the uh, third century, we can uh, talk about people who argue the gender of God. Uh, what's going on there, Pete? So you know how when some people say, if you do X, then Y will happen, and then Z will happen. Sure, that's yeah. Z, not Z, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and people go, oh, that's the slippery slope fallacy. Yeah? So women in the church, a group called Watch Women and, and the Church, fresh from the magnificent stuffing of the conservatives over women bishops, now issues like a statement saying, you know what? This way that we call God Father, it's really misogynist and, misogynist and sexist and patriarchal. We need to have liturgy that lets us call God she and mother and stuff like that. And, you know, we've had a week of this now, sort of in the <laughs> newspapers and on theological blogs and so on. And really, it, 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 if I can sum it up, it's a load of people who don't understand the basics of, of language and the difference between a metaphor and a formal naming title. Well, we, we can go back to Genesis, and Genesis says, man was made in God's image. We can go to the priestly prayer, or uh, uh, the, the prayer that Jesus taught us to preach, that says, our Father. Yet we can also look at what Jesus said to Jerusalem and said, um, God is l like a, uh, a hen bringing its, uh, its chicklets into a, a safe position. So if we look at all of scripture, it's not that there's a, a crisis of God's gender. Um, there's a crisis in identifying what is the real role of the father and what is the metaphor. So let's do a little bit of theology. Okay. okay? So the first thing that we, that, that we learn about God in scripture as, uh, it, to, to contribute to this sort of discussion are names and titles of God. Okay, so we begin with God's divine name himself, Yahweh, the Tetragrammatron, Jehovah, Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have all the different L forms. L, of course, being the Hebrew uh, word for God, Elohim, and so on. So we have, you know, you know El Shaddai and things like that. Um, and and we have the um, and we have the compound Yahweh Elohim, you know, the Lord God and stuff like like that. So we have names and titles for God, and then, and then in the New Testament, Jesus specifically relates to the first person of the Trinity with the title Father. So he teaches us when when we pray to say our Father, and when he himself talks to the first person of the Trinity, he says Father. So just look at as the, the great high priestly prayer in John 17, 
Jesus referring to the first person, not as mother, but as father. Okay, this is the divine second person of the of the Trinity. You think he would know? Okay, mm. so that's the first thing that that that, that, that we that we've got in our, in our little crash course of of our theology, our formal names and titles. Then the second thing that we have are metaphors for how God acts. Now, at this point, we start to get a lot of the feminine side of God coming through as well. You know, so we have um, Jesus himself saying, you know, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, as you said, how I wish I could have gathered you like a mother hen gathers her chicks. And, and scripture does talk about God wanting to mother us and things like that. You know, but these are never titles of God. God is never called mother. The only female divinities in scripture are not God. No. So you've got Ashtaroth, yes. the consort of Baal. Mm. You've got Artemis of the Ephesians, right? You know, mm. you've got you've got all these sort of all these sort of female gods. They're not God. Yahweh is God, mm. and Yahweh is always referred to given given masculine titles. He chooses to to relate to us like a father relates to his children. Now, the question that you need to ask is: Is the best theological resource to explore why God wants us to relate to Him as a father, rather than saying? The only reason why the Bible says that God wants us to relate to him as a father and not as a mother and address him in these terms is because the Bible was written by misogynist patriarchs. Like right? Jesus, yes. Like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such a nonsense. It's basically saying Jesus is a misogynist. And also it's like thinking, you know, God, the supreme ruler of the universe, the creator of all things, the one who sustains Everything, every second by his very being is incapable of dealing with a bunch of first century misogynist, patriarchal, sexist buffoons <laughs> and saying to them, hang on a minute, guys, I actually want you to call me mother. Uh, it's, so, it's such a nonsense theological argument, you know. So, yes, well, let's by all means, let's affirm the metaphors that God uses for himself. Mm -hmm. In terms of the femini the femininity of some of his actions, right? Mm. By all means, let's explore that. But also, at the same time, we need to take very seriously the fact that, that given the option of being referred to as father or mother, and given the fact that that was very common to have mother gods, that Yahweh, Elohim, wants to be referred to as father. And so the first person of the Trinity has always been related to as father. Well, let's the the, the question that, or the policy that Watch is saying is, listen, we don't have, um, the real reason we're proposing this is because a lot of women can't look at God as father. They're, they're troubled with it. And um, is that a good enough reason to change well, the, the gender? First of all, can we change the gender? But is that a good enough reason to change the gender? I don't think that's, a, that, that's an argument about women. That's an argument about men and women in general. I agree. Sometimes find it very hard to, re to, to, to relate to God as father. And that has a, often has a lot to do with their relationship with their father and their relationship with other significant men in, in their lives growing up. Mm -hmm. But what I've found uh, with, with, with men and women who have that issue is that actually the way that you deal with that is not to, um, you know, it's not to say the catharsis, it's not to say, oh, poor you, your pain, let's do something to make sure that you don't feel that pain and let's just pretend that that pain, that that pain shouldn't, 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 shouldn't happen. The real response is to go, why are you feeling that pain? Why are these responses happening? What has happened to your view of fatherhood? How can understanding how God is a true and, 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 and loving father help to heal those father wounds in your life? The same, you, you know, lots of people have father wounds and they also have mother wounds as well. And they have, they have false views of, of what a father and a mother should be. So, so, so sometimes when, you, you know, when when 
when men and women are re relating to God as Father, they're actually more relating to a Baal, right? They're more relating to a false image of masculinity. Um, and, and, and often, when we see this in the, the Episcopal Church with that glorious women's liturgy with the raisin cakes, right? Who are the raisin cakes made for? They're made oh. for Ashtaroth. Yeah. They're made for the for the female consort. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have these false images mm -hmm. of masculinity and femininity. These false images of maleness and femaleness. And femaleness. We actually need to remove those and understand what true maleness and true femaleness is, and what true masculinity and femininity femininity is. And God, as a true father, shows us what true fatherhood is. So the answer to I don't like relating to God as a father because I have issues with my own father or other men or blah, 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 is not to say give God a skirt, but it's actually to say let's deal with that. Let's help you heal rather than let's pretend that there's nothing to be healed mm -hmm. and let you carry on in your wounded state. Just going there, there, we'll just, we'll just adapt for your wound in a way that actually God wants something deeper. Well, the, you know, their argument is, well, the, the Bible doesn't talk about God's genitalia, you know. No, it doesn't, <laughs> but it's just a nonsense. I mean, I mean, yes, but, but that's the whole point. God isn't male or female, right? We're not saying, when we say our Father who art in heaven, we're not saying our embodied spirit with a penis like the Mormons are, right? We're not saying that. We don't fit, no, nobody, well, I hope not. No sensible Anglican who prays our Father thinks that God has a willy. Right? We don't. That's not why we say it. We say it because because of the nature of fatherhood of God, mm -hmm. and God, God wants to to, re, to re relate to Him chiefly in those terms. And 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 at the same time, the Bible has a real issue with female deities. It really does. It really does. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. So uh, gender is not the only issue going on in England this uh, this week. Uh, I heard there's more AMIE news, the Anglican mission in England. A lot of people thought that was the Church of England. It's not. What's the new news? <laughs> so the news is that we have a new AMIE church plant, this time in Guildford. Uh -huh. uh, uh, this time the Bishop of Guildford hasn't slapped any complaints under the clergy discipline measure upon any... Church of England clergy or bishops, anybody attending, I, I don't actually know who attended, yeah. but, um, you know, the, there isn't any legal shenanigans going on. Um, uh, good luck to the AMIE. I think there's, you know, I think uh, church church planting and evangelizing is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, if every single Anglican church was good at evangelizing and good at sharing the gospel, and by the gospel we mean repentance and faith and salvation in Jesus Christ, not god loves you and wants you to be a little bit nicer than you are um kind of gospel which is no gospel at all um as paul says uh you know if every single church was evangelizing properly we wouldn't need things like the amie you mm. know so i i think the church of england should be happy to work alongside amie um churches and vice versa and um yeah you know go for it um, well, I still think there are there are issues for the AMIE to work through in terms of what they're trying to achieve and where they fit into a wider ecclesiastical structure. Um, I think those need to be addressed. Um, you know, there are different views of episcopacy that, that, that need to be worked through. But yeah, you know, a, a, a church which is planted, which converts the heathens, has to be a good thing. Right? It has to be a good thing. It does. I mean, evangelism is the one thing in the world that can't be faked. Uh, you either yeah, believe absolutely. it or you don't. And uh, yeah. um, it, the, you'll see that in the Church of England. You'll see it in every province of the world. The ones that are growing aren't faking it. So, um, yeah. You know, what's interesting, we've, we've had over the, the weekend, uh, in the last few, few days, uh, some reports that, you know, the Church of England affiliation is going down. Yeah, I right? saw that. I saw uh, huge that's numbers. Yeah. So what we're saying is that the number of people who say that they uh, feel that they belong to the Church of England but never turn up and don't really live as Christians, that's gone down a bit. Well, you know, yeah. 
And in other news, Mexico apparently is full of Mexico. <laughs> you know. so, well, it's interesting. We had uh, we we had the same yeah. Pew uh, thing here saying uh, Christianity is being decimated, um, uh, yet the churches are still full. The reality is, it's what we call Reaganites. Uh, you know, when Reagan was president, everybody was Republican. They loved him. They loved the policies. La 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 la. And uh, if you went, if P the Pew Research people went out and said, "Are you Republican?" Uh, everybody said yes. In the same respect, uh, for the last uh, several decades, if you went out into uh, the public and said, "Are you Christian?" People said yes. But now that Christianity is getting some bad press and uh, is yeah. being persecuted, they're like, "No, nah, I just I'm a, I'm nobody." And, yeah, now it's yeah. uncool to be a Christian. Yeah. yeah? So. Then, then suddenly you don't want to be a Christian. Yeah. And that's okay because actually, you know, the church is the body of Christ. Yeah. Right? So you have the organizational church and you have the the um the the, the, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And um and, and you know what? Uh churches that are preaching uh the word are growing uh, uh faithfully. And and actually, the fact that uh, another million or two people don't want to be known as Anglicans, but never really want to know us anyway, yeah, <laughs> uh, is irrelevant. It no. it, actually, it's irrelevant for the for the gospel. And actually, now they realise that they're not Christians sure. and they don't want, want to be Christians. Yeah. Now, we, now the, you know, when I say, "Well, I'm I'm not Christian," it's like, "Well, now you you always go, well, now you really are fair game." That's aren't right. You? You, know? you, you are fair game. And yeah. Christian in name only only gets you so far. Peter, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we'll catch up again in a couple weeks as more news comes out of England. Thank you for upgrading to, uh, to fiber because uh, for a while there it looked a little bit like broadband. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just <laughs> shoddy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it I'll catch you later, Peter. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Bye.